Hey everyone, the paints we're using today are the Turquoise from Semco, that is a spotlight brand, uh, Emerald Green and Cadmium Yellow Hue, both from Creative Place, I combined them to make that beautiful lime green kind of colour. Uh, this is kind of like a fuchsia, so I used the pink from Montmartre with the crimson from Creative Place to make it a little bit more colour specific maybe. <laughs> that was the Purple Lake on its own from Creative Place. And the final colour is Purple Lake, Ultramarine Deep and Mars Black all combined to make that deep purple. So this is a going to be a string painting. So I'm going to do the string dip rose technique. Um, slightly different from previously. Um, but I know it's going to be amazing. Um, so the base I'm going to put down is the spring house paint from Bunnings with Floetrol that's mixed at approximately equal parts. So just as that's spreading nice and beautifully over the board. Uh, that is an approximately 12 inch square MDF board. I believe that is, ooh, I think it's 12 millimeters thick. Uh, I will have to check that, but I'll have it in the description below. And yeah, so as you could see before, the length I got for the piece of string did a loose kind of circle with a bit of overlap around the edge of that M MDF board. So that's how that's how I judged how long the string needed to be. Now there's no silicon in any of these paints, and they've all been mixed with uh, Floetrol and Atelier pouring medium so there the flow troll and the pouring medium are mixed at like equal parts and then that mixture which is my what, what I call my pouring medium mixture I have mixed that at equal parts to the paint so did I say I used no silicon in this? Okay, there's no silicon in this. Let's just be sure of that. <laughs> okay, so I've just layered the paints on top of the string. And because the string is so long, you could see I had it doubled over and looped. And that's also going to help give it um, the variation of color throughout the string. So, Pull it straight up out of the paint and down in a spiral and you can already see in that middle section that the paint is spreading onto the white and looking very soft and pretty. So now with this one I'm pulling towards the center and it it did it oh it gave it the most perfect result it was exactly what I visioned in my head because previously when I did this um, as far as I can remember <laughs> I pulled the string outward whereas this time I'm pulling it into the center so it just it's just that slight variation and I believe it gave me exactly the result that I was going for. So I just dipped the string back into that paint. And now I'm filling in the white space. 
and getting ready to pull it in towards the center again which pretty much fills in that white space gives that variation and absolutely thrilled so so pleased that this is exactly what I envisioned you can see with this one the string was so long I really struggled to keep the um, the white on the MDF clean it dripped off quite a bit but that's okay because the continuation of the spiral and the dragging of the string will um, will cover those so just going filling in those paints again on that string just before I loaded this one up you can see in that top corner I squeezed out the excess paint on the string and because that collects a lot of the white a lot of whatever the color background is so I thought it'd be good to squeeze that off and start afresh in the paint pile There we go. <laughs> I did bump the um, the what do you call it the the thing that's holding my camera that's coming up <laughs> and more drips. You can see that the paint's getting a little bit muddied. Um, that's just from playing with it and dragging the string so that's okay it's just like get your fingers in push the paint back over and all is well so I was just pointing out there that's where I'm going to go into those white sections and fill in those gaps As you can see it's just about at this stage repeating the spiral over and over as it grows towards the outside of the substrate um, putting that string down was where I bumped the camera holder selfie stick that's what it was so I had to wipe that up sorry about that it was it actually dripped into the painting <laughs> So popping it in again to absorb up the colours of the paint. And I find it kind of crazy that there seems to be like a pink corner, like from the centre to the bottom right corner. It just pretty much always seemed to be pink. And it was quite random wherever I laid the string down. But we ended up with that beautiful corner with those variations of the pink. It looks stunning. Very, very happy. So I let it drop over the edge and pull up over the edge as well. I thought that looked very, very natural for how the the flow of the string would have been so now that we're just down to a couple of corners I have squeezed off any excess paint from a section of the string and snipped it off with the scissors so 
So now it's much easier to handle and I definitely won't hit the camera with it. It's always good to know. And so I'm just placing it over the corners, filling in those sections in the continuation of that spirally rose bloom effect. And as you can see there, if you're really careful, you can go in and fill in some gaps. So it's pretty, pretty pleased with how that went. <clears throat> That's curious. How many times have I said pleased during this video? I'll have to have a look. <laughs> so just torching out some bubbles because there's no silicon. And so we're just going to have a look at um, how we get rid of some of these drips that occurred without damaging the effect. So I just thought a little toothpick type thing there, cocktail toothpick, uh, would help, help uh, maintain the lines and the effects of that section. And then I realized that with that paddle section, it could almost be like a swipe to blend it in. So, yay! So excited! So I'm definitely going to be trying some more of this um, in variations of the same color, variations of different colors. I mean, Look at this close up, it's amazing. There are cells there, which is just a reaction of the paints and the pouring medium mixture and being, um, what do you call it? Kind of swiped during that string pulling process. Got an amazing array of colors there. Oh, this is really gorgeous to look at. I just get lost looking into it and at the the blooms and the rise, the the flowy appearance. It's it's just stunning. Oh, and that looks like an eyeball kind of. Oh, it's the unicorn peacock eyeball. I love it so much. Let me know what you think of this. I'd be thrilled to know. So we'll look at the dry piece now. Da 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 da! All dry and still looks as stunning as it did. Like, I'm just so excited that it worked out exactly as I had planned, had hoped had envisioned and a beautiful beautiful effect there the colors were stunning yes this was a challenge um, and so the colors were selected for the challenge and I think they look absolutely stunning together so I really appreciate the fact that these challenges are put together and that we are all welcome to join in. Thank you so much for being with me. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know if you did. And thank you. Be fabulous. <laughs>